comfortable. Well, I'm recording it now, so all right. Um, off to the side, I'm actually looking at the questions on my other screen. Oh, okay. All right. So, what is your name? How old are you? And what do you do as a job? I'm Ben Traynor. I'm 39 years old, I think. Um, and I am a civil engineer working in the water industry. In the, specializing in water. All right. Mm -hmm. What is your role and or responsibilities in your job? Uh, it's mainly design. So I'm designing uh, structures that work within, uh, well, drawing water from the Murray River, for example, for irrigation. So things like pipes, what we call regulators that span the entire width of the river. No. Oh. Um, channels, things like that. Wow. The channels that the water goes in. So what do the, what do the channels do? Uh, they basically gravity feed the water out of the river and into the irrigation network. So the farmers the, that the farmers that. use. Yep. Okay. How long have you been in your current job? about three and a half years. Okay. Is this your first job? What did you do before and why did you change? No, uh, no, it's not my first job. I've had a few. Um, so previously I was in the mining industry. I worked as a mining engineer and I changed, uh, well, because it was time to change. I did that for about 10 years. Uh, so working out in the middle of a dusty mine site got a bit, yeah. got a bit old. Um, and also the industry went bust basically and I was made redundant. I think that happened about three times over the 10 years. So I thought All right. time, to, time to pick an industry where I could keep my job. Yeah. How are the jobs, this is a bit left field, but how are the jobs different? Because mining, in, if you're an in engineer, you were a mining engineer, now you're a civil engineer specialising in water. How are the, like, what similarities were in those jobs and how are they different? Because how can you go like from one to another? Yeah, I guess the, the rules of engineering, it's all around physics, maths, you know, if you're doing chemical engineering, it's chemistry, they don't change between the, between the disciplines. But I did have to go back to uni and do a master's, right. um, pick up some qualification yeah. outside of the uh, mining area. Okay. What subjects did you do at high school? Why did you choose these? And did they link to what you wanted to do? So do you mean in uh, year 11 and 12? Yeah, year 11 and 12. Uh, I did maths methods and specialist maths, uh, physics, did a bit of chemistry, oh. did English because everyone has to do English, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, and I did history revolutions. That was for fun. Right. That was your fun subject. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't, wasn't all that good at it, but... Uh, you enjoyed yeah, it. You, did, so that yeah. was the one you did for your mental health. Because that's Something like that. Yeah. All right, well, why I, was did you loaded up, I was loaded up with technical subjects and I was told I had to do a, a humanities-based subject. So I picked oh. that one. Right, and why did you choose those subjects? Uh, well, I determined pretty early on that I wanted to be an engineer and get into that field. So if you do you know, physics and mathematics, that's the best way to, to get into that field. Yep. Cool. Did you have to do extra study once you left school to get your job? Yeah, uh, university. So I did a four-year well, it was a four-year course at Ballarat Uni, but I took a, a lazy five years to, to do that because I had a lot of fun. Uh, and as I say, between the two industries, back to uni and another year studying masters. Yeah. So that leads into the next question. What qualifications do you have to have? Do you have to have for your job? Um, and how did you, like you sort of have already answered it, but how did you get that qualification? Yeah, so you need a degree um, and you'll need to go to university to get it. So do you need a civil engineering degree or just an engineering degree? Or like because a mining engineer was that, did you branch off mid-course or was there a mining engineer degree to do? 
Yeah, so the mining engineering degree branched off specifically into mining after the first two years. But the first two years of pretty much any engineering degree are the right. same. It's and so people that you were, people you were at university with, did you all end up doing different things or? Uh, at the time, Ballarat was only offering two different degrees. One of them was a, a mechanical engineering degree. Yeah. The other one was mining. Uh, I think there was only about 20 of us that did mine. Yeah. And did you go to Ballarat? Because since you, you grew up in Melbourne, so you actually left the place you were living to go to the country, which is quite unusual for a Melbourne person to leave given, like, I know where you, like, grew up and you live, grew up quite close to the city. So as a country person, I was a country person coming to Melbourne for uni. It's quite unusual to hear about, city people leaving for university. Why did you choose Ballarat Uni? Uh, I wanted to do something different. Uh, everyone else was hanging around Melbourne, so I wanted to do something a bit different. No <laughs> way. Plus, there was a, <laughs> I <laughs> there don't was believe the, it. <laughs> <laughs> plus, there was the lure of uh, moving out of home. That was uh, pretty yep. uh, lure. Oh, okay. okay. All right. How much do you earn? <laughs> uh, about 130. I looked at my tax return. For right. Is right. it different? Were you earning more as a mining engineer? Sometimes, but because of the constant redundancies and moving around from job to job, probably over time, I'd say no. Okay. But there were bonuses involved, and uh, if you looked at a, a in an hourly rate too, definitely not, because I was working, say, 12 to 14 hour days on site, whereas now I work eight or nine hour days. So yep. as an hourly rate, I'd, I'd be doing a lot better. Now. You're doing a lot better hourly. Um, do you still get bonuses in your current job? Nope. Uh, some consultancies do pay them, but uh, I've noticed that if you do have an employer that pays bonuses, it's a, it's a sort of culture that, I didn't really like working in because it became, rather than being a team environment, it was very competitive to try right. and get that bonus. Yeah. And you would have certain people undermining other other people to get to get at that bonus. So yeah. Third being a job would not do that. Here's another another question because you're in an area I'm not familiar with. With um, because you don't have bonuses, do you still undergo performance reviews? We do, but it's rather pointless the way it's done because uh, apparently it's not linked to how much we earn and, and we don't do it anywhere near the um, salary review period. So yeah. I'm, I'm not really sure why we do it, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest. It's just a corporate yeah. requirement. All right. Is there high employment opportunities in your field? Yeah, heaps. Um, what I'm concentrating on at the moment is water savings and water efficiency. Um, given the amount of droughts that we have in this in this country, there's a lot of work, and there's going to be a lot of work for quite a long time. Right. What about um, mining? No, not anymore. Mining just bounces around all over the place. Um, you know, you'll get a five or six year period where you can't hire mining engineers, and the mines will end up hiring engineers from other disciplines to right. try and fill the roles. Yeah. And, and then they'll decide that. Um, you know, the, the price of coal or iron ore or whatever goes down and they'll, they'll start sacking people. And, um, yeah. For example, the last company I worked for uh, moved on over 50% of their staff. Wow. Uh, when I left, so. Yeah. Cool. Um, how did you get your job? Where did you look? Uh, online. Uh, so the consultancy I'm working for was advertising for uh, engineers to work in a project that I'd already worked on. Uh, so that made the interview very easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically sit there and tell them, okay, this is how this project works. Yeah. Um, so, so in your field, is the internet like the place to go? And is it like a seek type forum or is it like company websites? Uh, yeah, you, I'd, I'd say use the online tools. Is yeah. the easiest way yeah. to go. Um, early on, I was working as a mining engineer. I was using HR uh, talent. What do you call them? Headhunters. Whatever you call them. Yeah. 
uh, but they, they don't have your best interests at heart. So okay. you're better off booking yourself and not using those guys. Yeah. All right. What is hard about your job? What's hard about my job? Probably the marketing aspect. I'm sort of expected to sell the company a little bit and to, to look for work and pursue it, which I'm not strong at. It's not something I like to do. I prefer to actually do the, do the work. Yep. Uh, so I find that quite difficult. Some people don't, some people love it, but not really my yep. um, strength. And what do you like about your job? Uh, that I'm independent. I don't really have a manager looking over my shoulder, so I can pretty much set my own hours and, and the way that I work. Uh, if I need to go out to site, I can just, can just do that. Uh, I don't necessarily go into, well, I know everyone's working from home at the moment, but yes. I was doing that for quite a while previously, just because it suited me. So. so do you have to negotiate with the farmers when you say on site? Do you have to go to their farm and say, oh, we want to put a channel through your property. Will you allow it? Oh, that's something I used to do when I was working directly for the water corporation. Uh, but in my current role, no. Okay. Um, my, my job is purely to, to do the design and someone else has done what we call the engagement. Yep. So they'll tell me what needs to be designed. and. Um, How long does it... This is more a curiosity thing. How long does it take you to design a channel? And when you say design it, like when I think about a water channel, it's just like a hole in the ground that water runs in. What, what exactly do you have to design? And then they pour concrete. And so, so the water doesn't seep into the ground. So what do you have to design? Well, it's probably easier to explain a pipeline, for example. Right. So you can go, but they just dig a hole and they put a pipe in the ground. How hard can that possibly be? But you're talking about, um, you may be talking about a pipeline that's 1.2 metres in diameter uh, for a gravity pipeline. And you've got to try and avoid uh, telephone lines, oh, uh, electrical yeah. cables, gas pipes. You've got to get sufficient depth under a road so that the pipe doesn't collapse under the road. People don't, people don't like that. You've also got to design it to get the flow rate that you need. Yeah, and the velocity of water through the pipe has got to be uh, within a certain range so that you're flushing um, yep. solid material out of the pipe and it doesn't build. So that's up. where all that physics and maths comes in. Yeah, it's all hydraulics. Yeah, yep. cool. All right, what traits would someone have to have to be in your job? I think you've got to have a technical mind. Um, you've got to enjoy maths. You've got to enjoy physics. Um, if you find yourself walking around thinking, how does that work? How does that work? Then engineering might be the job for you. So problem solving, do you have to be able to work with other people or is it because you work by yourself, you don't have to have that trait? Oh, I still have to work with other people. It's just I more often do that remotely. Yeah. Um, so I'll work, work as part of a team. We'll have someone designing a, a pump station, for example, and I'll oh, wow. design a pipe to suit it, for, for yeah. example. So. Someone will be designing something downstream of what I'm doing. Yeah. So you've got to pick everything up. But yeah, you've got to be a problem solver. You've got to come up with some creative ways to solve problems because yeah. you almost never have enough money. You almost never have enough time. Yeah. Cool. Where can your job take you? Like, can you travel? Can you go higher in the company? Can you yeah, solve you... world peace? <laughs> can you solve the water problems? Well, if you're Elon Musk, you can go into space. He's an engineer. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, for example, when I worked in, in mining, I spent about four months working in the US, right in the middle of Nevada, uh, so between Las Vegas and, yep. and, um, and Reno. That was fun. Yep. So you can do that sort of thing. The, the rules of, of engineering are exactly the same everywhere you go. They don't change. Right. So you can translate them to anywhere in the world, really. Yep. Cool. All right. Is there anything else you want to let the kids know about your job that they might not think about? Like if you were your, take yourself back to year 10, is there anything someone in your position, if you had known, would be helpful? Well, I guess don't, if, if, if you don't enjoy maths, then don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the, the maths that I learned in uni, I, 
I can't remember and I don't really use it now because it's all done via computers, but result uh, uh, doesn't really matter. You will still have to do an exam yeah. on that mathematics and you're going to have to learn it and grind your way through it. So yeah. um, just make sure that that's something that you're willing to do. Yeah. Cool.